And you said you had a, a penchant. <laughs> you, uh, you favored the pink toe tarantulas? Yeah, I've got a little bit of a soft spot for them. I, I don't know if it's just the way they strut when they walk, but yeah, they, they hooked me in pretty quick. Yeah, they seem to be one of those spiders that, uh, I mean, pretty much any pet shop I go to has a pink toe tarantula for sale. It seems like everybody, I think that was my first arboreal tarantula was a pink toe. And at one point I got I hooked into this cycle of constantly like every time i'd go i'd see a pink toe you know that petco or pet smart or whatever and i'd be like i'm gonna rescue it and i would i would buy it and bring it home go back next week to get some more crickets there'd be another one so i'd buy that one yep. and it was a it was a point i had like eight or nine avicularias <laughs> like it was like this is getting out of hand i mean they come in every color and pattern and i mean when you've got versicolors mm -hmm. under your your branch and celadonia it, it's like how can you not fall in love with that? Like, I, I just don't understand when I hear people talk about them and like, oh, they're just, they're too girly a tarantula. I don't want to keep those or, oh, they're boring. Like they're, they're pretty awesome considering they're the only group in tarantulas that we really do in the hobby that's not Theraphosidae. Yeah, that's very true. I, I really enjoy, you know, I'm actually doing a video, uh, a collaboration video with Tarantula Cat and I can't remember who else you said was going to be on there. Reptiliatus and Petco and uh, a few other people all about Avicularia, Avicularia. Kind of showing the different ways that we uh, we all set them up. And it's, oh, that's awesome. it's a uh, controversial, not a controversial, but it's there's there's been a lot of uh, bad information on Avicularia. Yes. It seems like it's uh, one of those species that it should be a beginner species. They're very docile and, and easy to take care of. But there was, I mean, for years, it seemed like so many of them were just randomly dying. And they came up with the, uh, oh, what do they call that? Sudden navic death syndrome or something like that. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so uh, I mean, what, what, how do you keep your avicularia? Give us some insight on, on, uh, on how you do that. Well, I got to say, I've been, I've been doing this for, I'm really dating myself here, uh, 22 years or so. And uh, I had a lot of sads at the beginning. Um, I followed all that advice where they say high humidity and uh, give them big open spaces. And, uh, the, the stuff I do now, I worry more about ventilation. Um, I take, uh, for the little ones, I use tattoo ink caps. And uh, for my larger ones, I just use like disposable, uh, basically what we keep our spiderlings in, the little condiment containers. Yeah. And I'll glue those up in the top of the enclosure for water dishes. Mm -hmm. um, so they've always got their access to water. Um, again, the ventilation's the big part. Uh, I put holes near the bottom uh, at ground level on the front and then toward the top and the back. So the air moves through in a current that refreshes the entire enclosure. Um, just missed once a week. Uh, and honestly, I haven't had a spiderling die in maybe 10 years now. Very cool. It's very similar um, to how I keep mine. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's honestly not as hard as everyone makes it out to be. It's just making sure you've got ventilation that clears up the entire enclosure. You're not just refreshing one part of it. Yeah. I actually just rehoused my avicularia, uh, one of them into one of the, uh, exoterra, Oh, I can never small, tall enclosures like 12 by 12 by 18. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it does have that kind of cross ventilation with the, the vents in the front and then the vents on top. Get some good circulation. And what I do um, when I'm using a larger enclosure like that is I put just a large water dish in the bottom of the enclosure. Because uh, as that evaporates, I, I find that it, it really helps keep the humidity at a good level in there without the air getting too stagnant. But I had seen, um, this was months ago, I don't know whatever came of it, but I'd seen some posts online. There was a few guys, um, actually I don't know if they were male, but there, there was a couple people that were talking about uh, experimenting with a, a different way, kind of a different uh, theory of how to keep avicularias. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, uh, but essentially what they were no, wanting to do was no substrate and not even a water dish. They were, they, but they were using uh, enclosure kind of like an exoterra you know arboreal enclosure and just filling the bottom bottom with water 
So it would just have a couple mm. inches of water. And because they were, you know, they were observing that their aviculators never really went down to the ground at all. So they didn't need the substrate and having that, that water uh, would, you know, do, uh, it would really help kind of keep the humidity up um, without like getting stagnant or at least, you know, without having to worry with mold and stuff like that when you have damp substrate. And they yeah, got, it's definitely interesting. yeah, I thought it was interesting as well. And they got eviscerated because you know how the, the tarantula hobby can be. You try something new. Uh, yeah. it, you, the, nobody likes that. <laughs> it's a oh my very God. I slow still remember to change. Back in the day on arachno boards. Yeah. Um, God, I was like, I think I was member number seven on that board. I'm not far into it at this point. <laughs> but uh, everyone was talking about communal keeping of Vicularia. And uh, everyone thought they had the right idea, but no one was really posting actual info of, of how it went. So I was like, you know what? I'm curious and I've got the, the stuff available to do this on the cheap. So I took a 55 gallon uh, terrarium that I had, set it up with cork hides, like dozens of them, uh, all kinds of live plants, plastic plants, uh, pretty much a paradise for pink toes. And through, God, how many was it? It was either eight or 10, I forget how many exactly. And uh, at the end of it, I ended up with two very large females, both gravid and nothing else. Um, and I posted all my results, had this super detailed thread, all kinds of photos. And I swear, I still see every year now, another person trying exactly the same thing and getting the exact same results. And then everyone's like, oh, but they're they're more tolerant. We can keep these communally. Uh, like all this works fine. and. It's just so funny to see it over and over again after putting forth the effort and putting the results out there that they still doubt it and want to try it. I uh, I was doing some research about five or six years ago. Uh, it was actually when I, I, it may not have been that long ago. It was whenever I, I was just starting my YouTube channel. So it was a couple of years ago, I guess. I was, you know, just trying to get some additional information on Avicular. It was one of the first videos that I did. And I came across this old video on YouTube that had hundreds of thousands of views of this guy uh, keeping uh, Vicularia communally in, in a very large enclosure. I mean, like, uh, larger than any enclosure that I have. Like, you know, it's something that you would keep, like, uh, that I don't even know what you would keep in it. Some kind of large reptile. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. probably, like, 36 inches high or something. Uh, massive two-door glass enclosure. And he had two or three Avicularias in there. Uh, it just, you know, really tall. And it looked really cool. And there was a lot of webbing. And, uh, but, you know, I... I never saw any follow-up video about how they were doing. <laughs> so I kind of assumed that they ended up, you know, some cannibalism took place there. Because that's two that or, seems to two be... Two or three in a space that big might function, but mm. again, I'd, I'd want to see the results. Yeah, and that, that was that was the thing, is I had, I had seen a lot of people talking about experimenting, keeping them communally, and then you never see any updates. So pretty much any time I see somebody doing that, I'm like, okay, apparently it didn't go well. Because <laughs> they're, they're not <laughs> bragging about how well it's going. Uh, yeah, you know, I, like, just, I think back to the Dark Den video where he got the uh, uh, the Neoholotheliensi eyes yeah. and tried to keep them communally and then he was down to like, what, I think one or two of each color. Yeah. yeah it's always it's always sad seeing that because, I mean, there's it's really a cool concept to be able to keep multiple tarantulas in one enclosure. Like, I actually have a Monocentrophus balfouria communal right above my head here. And oh, yeah. they're doing really well, but... I actually, I started out with four and I'm down to three in the communal, but it wasn't cannibalized. I think it just had a bad mold or I don't, I don't know what happened. I, it, it looked like it, it had come out of its, you know, web tunnels and like was just on the side of the enclosure laying on its back like it was about to molt. And I don't know if one of the other uh, Balfouris disturbed it or something mid molt, but it, it just never, it just it, it ended up dying. It's kind of heartbreaking. Yeah, I've had the exact same results in mine where like one or two will just randomly die. Yeah. Um, but I think the uh, the fact those can be kept communally is why that species has gotten to become so popular yeah. so quickly. But I think so many I mean, they, they weren't even in the hobby five years ago. Yeah, I don't think. And they're still, I mean, relatively expensive for tarantulas. I mean, it's it's expensive to have a communal and can be financially devastating when it starts going wrong. And I think that's yeah. why a lot of people are attracted to something like the Neotheli NC. Yeah, you know, the possibility of keeping those communally because they're the price tag on them, at least here in the U.S., is is definitely cheaper. It seems to be a lot more of them available, and 
you know, it's, I, I would, I think it'd be awesome if it could be kept communally, but I was just, I've never really, I've rarely seen anybody talk about it, um, become being successful, uh, just, just yeah, like a Vicky I've Larry. I've never you know. seen a successful one. Yeah, it seems like it, it always, it always ends badly, <laughs> but people see, keep trying it. But what I was saying earlier is that I think a part of the reason people keep trying to keep a Vicky Larry is communally is because there's a couple of websites out there and a couple of YouTube videos that are very popular or at least they, they've been around for a while and gotten a lot of hits so the algorithm will suggest them and if you just type in avicularia communal it's probably the first video that pops up so people uh, see that and get excited and then it's like well it doesn't matter what you have to say <laughs> like it, the recent information uh is not enough to kind of um you know settle down somebody that's extremely excited at the concept and <laughs> they just gotta you know some people have to touch the stove to, to realize that it's hot <laughs> it doesn't matter how many times you tell them but yeah, it makes makes me wonder if I need to like do my experiment all over again with with a new group of them and make a YouTube video out of it. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's that's like the downside of social media, uh, especially YouTube, is that it, it it doesn't always give you the best information or the most recent information. It's it's just like the most popular information based off what it is you're you're searching for. I mean, if you look yeah, I for. Think I saw tarantula cat do a video on that where she pulled up this guy that's like sponges in the water dishes and uh just all the worst stuff you can imagine like put them in a 10 gallon with like an inch of substrate and yeah uh jungle so, bob or something like that it's his name <laughs> i mean that's one of the first videos I, I you know if you just search uh how to care for a tarantula or a pet tarantula or something that's first thing that pops up it's got millions of views and it's like 10 years maybe 12 years old it's it's an old video but it's it's the first one in a google search usually that pops up as well so it just mm -hmm. seems like the old information the bad information uh, is just a lot e more easily accessible mm -hmm.